Hey everyone, ready for a deep dive into hospital lingo? We're going to decode some essential vocab today, straight from this article. 25 hospital vocabulary words you need to know. Sounds good. This is especially for anyone out there navigating healthcare, you know, in English. Oh, I love that. Yeah. It's so important to feel confident with the language, especially when you're dealing with, you know, health concerns for yourself or even someone you care for. Absolutely. Yeah. So imagine we're on a hospital tour, right? Mm. Picking up these keywords as we go. Okay. I like that. All right. First stop, we got to meet the hospital all-stars, the people you're going to encounter. Okay. We've got doctors and nurses, of course. Mm -hmm. But did you know that doctors often specialize? Right. It's not just a one-size-fits-all approach to medicine anymore. Right. So let's say you're dealing with, like, um, a heart condition. Okay. You'd probably want to see a cardiologist. Makes sense. Someone who's, you know, dedicated their entire career to understanding the cardiovascular system. And, of course, for children, we have pediatricians who are experts in, you know, making kids feel comfortable, but also addressing any concerns that parents might have. Yeah, the right expert for the right situation. Uh, exactly. Okay, but what about before we even get to the hospital? Oh, the... Sometimes you need those paramedics rushing in. Yeah. I always think of them as like the first line of defense in an emergency. Absolutely, the rapid response team. Yeah. You know, they're stabilizing patients, sometimes, you know, at the scene of an accident or an emergency. Right. Think about it. They're making these really critical decisions, often with limited information, just to make sure that someone gets the best possible care before they even reach the hospital. Wow, what a demanding job. Definitely. Okay, so let's say the paramedics have done their thing. Mm -hmm. We arrive at the hospital, and immediately we're faced with like, a, a maze of corridors. Right. This is where knowing your hospital map comes in handy. Right, hospitals can be confusing places, even without the added stress of having a health concern. So let's start with a place I think we're all pretty familiar with. Okay. The emergency room, or as many people call it, the ER. The ER, yeah. This is where you go for urgent situations, sometimes even life-threatening situations. Okay. You know, we're talking heart attacks, serious injuries. Right. Anything that needs immediate attention. Exactly. It's all about speed and efficiency in the ER. So it's like organized chaos. It can feel that way with all these highly trained professionals just working so quickly to assess and stabilize patients. Wow. And then, you know, from there, depending on the severity of the situation, someone might be admitted to the hospital. Okay. And one critical area you might hear about is the intensive care unit or the ICU. ICU, that sounds serious. It is. It's where the most critical patients receive continuous care. Wow. They often have specialized equipment and a very high staff to patient ratio. Yeah. Think of it as like a highly controlled environment where literally every detail matters. It makes sense. And then there's the OR, right? Oh, the OR, the operating room. Yes, where surgeons work their magic. Right, another highly controlled space. It's designed for sterility and precision. Oh, for sure. You know, it's fascinating to think about all the skill and coordination that goes into surgical procedures. Everyone from the surgeons to the nurses to the anesthesiologists, they all play such a crucial role. Yeah, it's definitely a team effort in there. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so we've covered some pretty key areas, but there's more to a hospital than just those intense places, right? Yeah. What about the places everyone ends up? The waiting room and the pharmacy. Of course, we can't forget those. Yeah. Waiting rooms are, well, I think a pretty universal experience, whether you're the patient or just a loved one. You know, it's yeah. that space of, you know, anticipation and sometimes a little anxiety. For, uh, and then the pharmacy, well, that's where we get our prescriptions filled and, you know, hopefully get those instructions explained and start on the road to recovery. That's the goal. Absolutely. All right. So we've met the team. We've explored the map. Now let's dive into what actually happens in a hospital. Okay. I'm ready. I think the most basic procedure... One that we're probably all familiar with is the examination or the checkup. Yeah, the checkup. Have you ever wondered why doctors always start by asking you about your symptoms and your medical history? Mm -hmm. It's all part of that examination, gathering information to try and get an understanding of your overall health. Right. It's like piecing together a puzzle. Exactly. You know, what might be going on. Okay, so it's like detective work. Exactly. With your body is the case. I like that. And sometimes, to get a clearer picture, doctors need more than just their senses, right? Right. That's where diagnostic tools come in. Exactly. And one that we're all familiar with is the x-ray. Ah, the x-ray. The superhero vision of the medical world. Yes. I remember the first time I saw an x-ray of my own broken bone. 
Oh, wow. It was fascinating and also a little freaky, you know, to see inside my own body like that. Yeah. It's pretty amazing how technology allows us to see beneath the surface like that. For sure. So x-rays are especially good at revealing bone injuries, mm -hmm. but they can also help diagnose other conditions too, right? Absolutely. Things like pneumonia or even certain types of tumors. Okay. So x-rays use radiation to create those images. Right. What about ultrasounds? Ah. <sighs> Ultrasounds. They're used during pregnancy. Yes. So they must be safer. You're spot on. Ultrasounds use sound waves to create images. Wow. Which makes them a really safe option, even for the most delicate patients. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible to think that we can see a baby's heartbeat or check the health of internal organs just by bouncing sound waves around. <laughs> That's mind-blowing. It is. And then, of course, there are blood tests. Oh, yeah, blood tests. Such a tiny sample, but it can reveal so much about your health. So much information in just a few drops of blood. Yeah, from infections to vitamin deficiencies. It's like a snapshot of your body's internal chemistry. And they can detect these really subtle changes that you might not even notice from a physical exam alone. So it gives doctors all these valuable clues to diagnose and monitor a whole range of conditions. So we've covered examinations and some key diagnostic tools. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling a bit more confident already. Me too. But what about the actual stuff they use in a hospital? The tools of the trade. Oh yeah, the gadgets and gizmos. Exactly. We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. Welcome back. So before the break, we were talking about all these like really amazing ways doctors can see inside the body. Right. It's incredible what technology can do these days. But what about those everyday tools? Mm -hmm. You know, the things you'd probably see just in a regular hospital room. Some of them are pretty iconic, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh Some tools have become like synonymous with healthcare. Yeah. Like the stethoscope. Oh, yeah. The stethoscope. It's such a simple device. Yeah. But it's been helping doctors listen to heartbeats and lung sounds for I mean, centuries, really. It's amazing how much information they can get just from listening, right? It is. It's a real skill to be able to interpret those subtle sounds and understand what's going on inside. I remember as a kid, I was always fascinated by, like, the way my doctor could use the stethoscope to hear my heartbeat. Mm -hmm. It felt like magic. <laughs> it kind of is. And speaking of, like, simple but essential tools, we can't forget the thermometer. Oh, yeah, of course, the thermometer. Which, it's the first line of defense against fever. Right. Which can be a sign of so many different things. Yeah, from a common cold to something much more serious. Exactly. A change in body temperature can be a really crucial clue, helping doctors narrow down, you know, possible diagnoses. Right, right. And then there are tools that, well, maybe seem a little more intimidating to some people. Okay, like what? Like syringes. Oh, needles. Yeah, I'll admit, needles make me a little squeamish, too. Tim here. But they are essential <laughs> for so many things. Yeah. Vaccinations, drawing blood for those blood tests we were talking about mm. earlier. True. True. It's all about perspective, I guess. Right. They deliver those life-saving vaccines and allow us to, you know, collect those tiny samples that tell us so much about our health. Okay, that's a good point. So maybe a little pinch is worth it in the long run. Yeah, maybe so. And then you've got those IV drips, you know, those bags of fluid hanging by the bedside. Oh, yeah. Those always seem a bit mysterious to me. I know, right? But they're actually quite ingenious. They provide a direct route for delivering fluids and medications right into the bloodstream. Oh, okay. So it bypasses the whole digestive system entirely. Makes sense. It's crucial for patients who are dehydrated or need continuous medication, or maybe they can't take anything by mouth for whatever reason. So it's like a lifeline in a way. Exactly. Keeping those vital substances flowing when other routes just aren't an option. Okay. So we've covered the people, the places, the procedures, even the tools. Mm -hmm. That's quite a lot. It is. Now let's walk through like a typical patient journey you know, from start to finish. I think it all starts with a diagnosis, right? That moment well, when you find out what's actually going on. Right. The diagnosis is like solving a mystery, you know. Oh, interesting. Doctors are gathering clues from your symptoms, your medical history, all those diagnostic tests we talked about. And they're trying to put all the pieces together to figure out what's causing your health concerns. Yeah. And it's a really crucial step because it guides everything that comes after. So the diagnosis is like the roadmap for treatment. Exactly. Once the doctor understands the problem, they can create a plan to address it. Okay. And treatment can take many forms. It can be medication, surgery, physical therapy, even lifestyle changes. It really depends on the individual patient, right? Absolutely. It's all about finding the best approach for each person. And treatment is often a collaboration between the patient and the whole healthcare team, you know? Right. Working together to get the best possible outcome. 
I like that. A team effort. Definitely. And sometimes treatment involves a prescription. Yeah, the doctor's orders. Right. It's their instructions for specific medications. And then it's off to the pharmacy where they, you know, translate all that medical jargon into something we can actually understand. Exactly. Pharmacists are like the unsung heroes of healthcare. They dispense medications. They make sure you understand how to take them safely and effectively. And they answer any questions you might have. Yeah, they're great resources. They really are. So don't be afraid to ask them anything. Good advice. And then after all that comes recovery. Okay, so hopefully things are starting to look up at this point. Yeah, fingers crossed. Recovery is the process of healing and regaining your health. Right. And it can be a long journey, sometimes challenging. Yeah, for sure. But hospitals offer a supportive environment for this phase, you know? Mm -hmm. Nurses and therapists are there to help patients manage pain, regain strength, and learn to adapt to maybe any new limitations they might be facing. So it's not just about treating the illness, it's about supporting the whole person as they recover. Exactly. It's a holistic approach. I like that. And finally, the moment we've all been waiting for discharge. Going home. Yes. But discharge isn't just about leaving the hospital. It's about transitioning to a new phase of care. You know, oh, okay. you'll probably get instructions for home care, how to manage your medications, and you'll probably have some follow-up appointments to make sure everything's going smoothly. It's like the closing chapter of your hospital story. That's a great way to put it. But it might not be the end of the book, right? There might be more chapters to come in your healthcare journey. Exactly. Discharge is a milestone, a sign of progress. For sure. But often, it's just the beginning of a new chapter. I like that. It's a new beginning. Yeah, it really does. You know, just understanding those few terms, those basic terms, can make a huge difference in how we navigate, you know, the whole healthcare system. It's true. And I know for me, even just knowing what those acronyms stand for, yeah. ER, ICU, or R, like, it just takes away some of the mystery, you know? That's absolutely. And it makes it feel a little less overwhelming. Yeah, I agree. And I think, think about it. The more comfortable you are with the language, mm -hmm. the more empowered you're going to feel to ask questions, to advocate for yourself, yeah. and really just participate in your own healthcare decisions. Exactly. It's all about feeling informed and confident, right. whether you're the patient yourself or, you know, you're supporting a loved one going through their own, you know, healthcare journey. Right. So this deep dive is just the starting point, right? It is. There's always more to learn. Oh, absolutely. This is like a crash course uh, yeah. in some essential hospital vocab. But, you know, the world of medical terminology is so vast and fascinating. For sure. I mean, if this sparks your curiosity, I really encourage you to just keep exploring. That's a great idea. Maybe delve deeper into a specific area of medicine that interests you. Yeah. Or, you know, use this knowledge to support friends and family who might be, you know, navigating healthcare situations of their own. That's such a good point, you know, that this yeah. knowledge isn't just for us. It can also help us be better advocates and allies for the people around us. Absolutely. And who knows, maybe one day you'll be using these terms yourself confidently, you know, yeah. navigating a hospital visit or helping someone else feel more at ease. I love that. What a rewarding thought. It is. You know, everyone's healthcare journey is unique, but having the shared understanding of the language gives us all a common ground. Mm -hmm. It gives us a way to connect and support each other. Beautifully said. Thank you. So until next time, stay curious, keep learning, and remember, we're all in this together. We are. And don't forget, a little knowledge can go a long way, especially when it comes to your health. So true. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Thanks for having me.